Hallo Deutschlerner! There are three different pronouns in German that are all written as S-I-E. Whenever you hear the word Z in German, it could mean she, or they, or you, or even her, it, or them. So how do you figure out which one is meant and what is the real difference between them all? That is the topic of today's Shallow German Deep Dive. Too long of a lesson for a short, too short of a lesson for a long video, too important of a topic to be ignored. Welcome to today's Shallow German Deep Dive. Let's start with the basics. When you first start learning German, one of the first things that you're introduced to are personal pronouns. These are things like ich for I and er for he. Generally, the list includes the following nine words. Ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, sie, and Z. Three of those are S-I-E. The first one is translated as she, and it's the easiest to identify in sentences because it requires the verb to end with a T most of the time. Verbs like machen, to do or to make, change into macht when used with the subject as Z, meaning she. The last two are a bit more tricky because the verb form is the same regardless of whether it means they or it means you. If the sentence is written, however, you might be able to tell the difference due to the capitalization because Z, meaning you, is always capitalized, which means that whenever you see Z, and it's capitalized, in the middle of a sentence, you can be assured that the meaning is you. That falls apart, however, whenever the first word in the sentence is Z, or when you're just hearing it in conversation. You can't capitalize words when you're speaking, although that would be kind of cool. Both of those versions of Z require EN at the end of the verb, which tells us that it's either they, lowercase, or you capitalized. This means that in most circumstances, the only way to tell the difference between Z meaning they and Z meaning you is context. So if you address someone directly or someone is addressing you directly, they use Z in those sentences, probably meaning you, as this is what the context calls for. If, however, you are talking about a group of people in the third person, meaning you are not directly speaking to them, you are going to be using that noun as a plural noun, and therefore you need to use they as your translation. Now that we have the general concept outlined, let's look at some example sentences to help us to really understand which which is which. Das ist meine Schwester. Sie hat einen neuen Hund. This is my sister. She has a new dog. In this sentence, I'm talking about my sister. She is not in this conversation, which means that I am talking about her in the third person. The third person singular pronoun for a female person is Z, meaning she. We can tell this based on the context in which the word is used, but also because the conjugated form of the verb haben is hat. This means that the only translation for Z in this sentence is she. Haben Sie Kinder? Do you have children? This sentence is translated with you because Z is capitalized, but whenever it's said out loud, there is no way for you to tell whether Z means you or they. To avoid this confusion, you would have to have more context. If you're talking directly to someone, it is appropriate to assume that Z means you in this context. If you're talking about a couple that is not in the conversation, however, the only logical translation would be they, as you're talking about that couple rather than being in person talking to the person to whom the question was posed. For example, mein Bruder und seine Frau lassen sich scheiden. My brother and his wife are getting divorced. Haben sie Kinder? Do they have children? Let's try another situation. Sie gehen nach Hause. They are going home. Why did I translate this Z with they? Simple. It's incredibly unlikely that you're saying you are going home. You could command them to go home, but then it would be more likely to see the verb at the very beginning and say gehen sie nach Hause. Although technically you can say sie gehen nach Hause as a command without using the official imperative structure. The conjugation of the verb tells us that we don't mean she here. I mentioned at the beginning of this lesson that Z can also be translated as her, it, or them. That's because none of the Z's on our list change in the accusative case. This makes it slightly more difficult, however, to tell which one is which because the conjugation no longer tells us which Z we mean. Now we have to rely exclusively on context. Ich habe sie zu Hause gelassen. I left them at home. Or I left it at home. Because there is little context here, we can't really tell if it's them or it. Basically, we don't know the number of things that were left at home. Without context, it would be almost always questioned by the German person as well. 
Was hast du zu Hause gelassen? Besides the lack of capitalization of the word Z in this sentence, we can also safely assume that we aren't saying I left you at home, because you would probably actually address someone who was left at your home with du and not Z. Kenne ich Z? Do I know you? In this sentence, I only really know that the translation is you because it is capitalized in the sentence and it says Z. If it were lowercase, it could be them, it, or her. Kenne ich Z? Do I know them? Or, do I know it? Or, do I know her? If this is said out loud, there's no way for you to know if you mean you, them, her, or it in this sentence. With a bit of context, however, we can figure it out. Sie kommen mir bekannt vor. Kenne ich sie? You look familiar to me. Do I know you? Fred und Daphne? Kenne ich sie? Fred and Daphne? Do I know them? Du hast deine Schwester? Kenne ich sie? You have a sister? Do I know her? Out of all of these examples, there is one key takeaway from this entire lesson. How do you know if Z means you, they, them, she, her, or it? Context. It's all about context. If you like this lesson, you will love the other lessons in this series. Learn the differences between in and im, or eins and eines. Click over here to watch all of those videos. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.